All right, everybody. Um, I'm here with my good friend, Marsha, <laughs> up in, oh, you live in Montana, right? Montana. Yep. Montana. They're just making her jealous. I just got to go in the pool today. My pool is cold, but <laughs> Reading being the second sunniest city <laughs> in all of North America, I think after our session, I'm going to go for a walk down by the river. Anyways, just to make you a little more jealous. <laughs> so we're yeah. talking today a, a bit about um, the Healy and um, specifically the coaching module. Okay. So uh, the coaching module is something, by the way, until the end of January so far, you can get for a one-time fee. After that, it will be a subscription. And it shows up in the uh, Blue Dot app. Okay. So we're going to talk today a bit about um, how I use it, some suggestions and some demonstrations on how I use it. Um, I will say right off the bat that um, my very specific technical understanding of it and how I use it maybe isn't very uh, refined, but the way I use it is very effective. And so a lot of stuff I'm going to be using, um, you know, if you don't know how to muscle test or do energy healing work, you're still going to get a lot of benefit from this. If you do know how to muscle test and do some other modalities in addition to this, um, what we're going to show you is, um, is going to be super, super helpful. I've found it to be extraordinarily insightful and, uh, and life-changing so far in my use of it. So um, um, first, I'm going to make sure, Marsha, that I have you um, in my Healy as a client. And um, all right, let's make sure this is on. So it's always about making sure that device is connected. And um, all right, do we have you in here still? I know we did it one time. JKL. No. Okay. So smile for me, real quick. Um, I'm going to person add you. All right. Beautiful. And uh, I'm going to uh, pause some of this because I don't, not everyone needs to know right. exactly where you're born and all that, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. pause it here. Now, I'm, uh, since we're over distance, I just entered all her information in, took her picture, all that. Um, now I'm going to record the vibration for her. So since we're over distance, I'm doing that on her behalf with clear intention. Uh, I know Marsha pretty well, so this is a pretty accurate for me. And uh, the less you know someone, the more accurate information you probably need to put in there, picture, all that. But um, Marsha and I have spent a bit of time together. <laughs> and uh, there we go. So I have uh, her in here as a client. And I'm going to set this up so I can screen share from my phone. And uh, so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to go into the um, Heal Advisor app. So we call it the Blue Dot app. And you notice in the middle, there's a coaching analysis. Now, if you just have a Healy resonance and you open it up, you will notice you don't have that coaching analysis in there. That's it, because it's an additional module. So if you go to buy it, you go into the shop under app modules and you'll fi find it here. Um, one thing to realize is you'll see perhaps both a personal and a coaching module. Um, and this, I have a coaching module. The coaching module has everything for the personal module and a bunch of additional stuff. So don't buy both of them. Don't ask me how I know that you can buy both of them and then not need to have bought both of them and then have to get a refund. So, <laughs> so um, I'm going to open up the coaching analysis here. I'm going to go find Marsha, Marsha, Marsha Green. There we go. And so for a focus, um, what we're going to... Um, do you want to work on the same focus you have before, Marsha? Did you muscle that, test that for yourself or? No. Or do you want um, me to show you how I would choose something? Yeah. How would you choose something? Do that for you. So um, I'm going to stop, um, uh, stop this sharing and I'm going to show you how personally I would do this. Okay. 
Okay. Let me, um, I'm gonna make a new set of notes just for this session. Um, so people can see what and how we're doing. Marsha coach demo. So if you're seeing this on YouTube or anywhere, I'll include the link to this document, which has, you know, we're not going to reveal any of okay. personal info, but it will, uh, people can look at the notes that we're about to do here um, to follow along. So um, I'm going to, um, there is something called an advanced inner healing muscle testing toolkits. And um, so mm -hmm. one of the things when doing, um, you'll see this document right here, the advanced inner healing muscle testing toolkit, you can get this at muscletestingkit.com. So this is um, for people watching, this is just a, like a 30 page document that one of my coaching clients uh, created. Thank you, you know who you are. She likes to remain anonymous, but super useful. I don't know about you, I use it every day. Right. Oh, phenomenal. Yeah. And so what it is, it's a muscle testing is just a yes or no response. And, um, and to whether or not something's energetically accurate. So if I want to figure out um, what the best um, phrase or focus for Marsha is, um, I can make a statement like this. First of all, I would make a statement. I'm muscle testing for Marsha. These are her results. And then check and see if that's energetically accurate. And there's a lot of different ways to muscle test. Um, if you need to learn how to do, do muscle testing, go to teachmefrequency.com. I've got a lot of coursework there, like 80 videos on different subjects. And so um, I would say, okay, um, so I'm testing for Marsha. These are her results. By the way, I first say, I just ask God for wisdom and insight to be a blessing to you to manifest more of unconditional love, peace, joy, wholeness, abundance in every area of your life. I always find it good to ask for help. And so I'm testing for Marsha. These are her results. Um, so the way I muscle test is just using the muscles governing my swallowing and breathing. So I'm good. And then I'm going to say, um, as Marsha, the most helpful thing for my uh, focus phrase for this coaching module is accurately described on, and then I go through, is it on the map of consciousness? Yes or no. On the chart of emotions? Yes or no. Is it listed in the positive pages and the negative pages or on the word chart, which is about four additional pages. So if I can figure out what chart it's on, then I can figure out what row and column and I can get down to the words, right? So interesting of negative page two, B, B6. Um, something about so we'll just put these words down in a very neutral manner and then see what comes up. So the first word is irresponsible, actually. Or irresponsibility is something on the... Uh, um, is eliminated by something on the... By... Uh, so we go to then to the map of consciousness. Um, this word abdication down here is actually a very useful word. Uh, so abdication is a word that can, it, some of these words on this chart can go um, good or bad. Does that make sense? Abdication in, in, in its very basic form is it means to give up your personal power or your rule or your authority, right? And that always looks bad, except if you are giving up your rule and your power to something benevolent. Does that make sense? Um, and uh, by abdicating, abdicating to something on the, actually we'll put this abdication word down, comes back over 10 times, abdicate, 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 abdicate to uh, something on the, something on the positive, to um, being so one of the one of the very important things energetically is to uh, to have a clear sense of value and identity that comes from God's unconditional love for us 
and not from um, I'll be valuable when I do this or when I accomplish this or, you know, uh, you know, it, if, if we're trying to get in shape or physically healthy, we always look at then I'm valuable, right? If I'm not fit and healthy, then I'm not valuable. And one of the things that that can disconnect us from actually achieving it is um, a kind of a certain sense of identity of like, oh, I'm not someone who falls through or does things correctly, or a, a very a very strong tendency to be incredibly harsh and nitpicking on what we're doing or not doing right. Does that makes sense. And uh, and people in general have that problem. So <laughs> I don't even have to ask it. Yes, everybody does that, right? So. So this is, this is, you know, and, and this setup phrase that we're talking about, Marshall, I know that you intellectually agree with it, right? Right. But we're not talking about intellectually agreeing with it when our subconscious and our nervous system runs our whole life. Who cares what you think, right? What you right. feel, right? Um, a great example of this is, and I know you know this story, is my mom who wanted to lose 30 pounds and was feeling very stuck on it when she did a bunch of work until we figured out that the last time she had lost 30 pounds was the year her mother and sister were killed by a drunk driver. And it was a year from H double hockey sticks, crazy stressful. And the stress of that year melted 30 pounds off of her. So 60 years later, when she goes, I want to lose 30 pounds, her subconscious is like, mm, no. <laughs> why because people have to die to create the environment to create the weight loss and that's not a kind of good idea so that's what we're talking about right so if we go back to this the setup phrase is um so we'll say my irresponsibility is eliminated so my my lack of ability to follow through and do what i need to do is eliminated how by changing your value and your identity not by disciplining yourself more. Does that make sense? Right. And then, you know, one of the things to conquer health and fitness is the ability to look at the thing that's trash talking you, which is, oh, you're not going to, you're never going to get this. It is never going to work. You've tried blah, blah, blah. And so the weight or the lack of health mocking you and saying, I own you because I tell you what you're worth and you can't beat me. And so it prevents us from being wholehearted and moving forward. You follow me? But if you can look at the yep. scale and go, you don't get to determine what I'm worth because I am already, God tells me I am supremely valuable. Proved it to me. Wait, come, go, whatever. You, you don't have the power to determine my value, right? Now I can rest and I can be very wholehearted. What does that mean? I'm going to go for it, but you failed 20 times. Yeah, so we learned every time. We're just going to do it again. Not like, oh my God, what if I doesn't work out again? And, and so the, the threat of future failure, this, I find this especially true for um, much less shame for someone who has always been overweight than for someone who's been overweight, gotten fit, gained it back. That's a much more painful process. Does that make sense? Because you yep. know uh, what really happens is we 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 catastrophize or imagine what people are saying about us, right? And if we've always been overweight, they're like, "Oh, poor poor Susie, she must have some glandular issue." But if Susie got super fit, they're like, "Dang, look at her!" And then she gains it all back. They're like, "Oh, I guess she's just lazy." <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. I guess she's just not disciplined. That's why if she would, you know, Marsha, it's just calories in, calories out. You know, you just need to discipline yourself, right? But and, she uh, just right. eats too much. She she needs to go on a better diet. To, yeah. Yeah, I want to punch people in the throat who say that because it's like clearly yep. you've never worked with a wide range of people because it's right. not that simple. I tell, I've had clients yeah. literally fast and not yep. lose any weight. Yep. So don't give me the calories in, calories out. I'm going to swear, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but it's true. So we have to connect to that we're worth it. Connect to that it can be easy. Connect to that the, the physical 
fitness and health can be a beautiful gift instead of winning the personal development Olympics. Right, because if you have to get there by winning the personal development Olympics, then you also have to um, stay there through perfect discipline. And that's that's a little stressful. Right. So um, anyway, so we're going to go back um, to this. Oops, that's not what I want to do. I want to go to screen share start. Perfect. And back into. All right. So um, I'm going to enter in my now. Keep in mind the words I type in here. The 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 device is not looking at the words I'm typing in. The words I type in are a to help me focus my personal uh, intention. Okay, so my responsibility irresponsibility is eliminated by abdicating 10 times. So it's like, it's over and over. Does that make sense? Over and over. Like, no, no, mm -mm. I, I let go of my opinion. I abdicate to God's opinion of me. Just over and over and over. Um, to the fact that uh, I'm all ready okay so now we're going to continue database selection and this is a is an area where you'll see different people do different things um yeah. i really uh you know we can make a guess that maybe it doesn't have anything to do with the career uh, sometimes i grab things from a lot of different sections okay and i don't really go um into the next thing and go, okay, which one of these am I gonna grab? Honestly, what I do is, um, okay, hold on. Okay, what I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go down the list. I may pick maybe one, maybe three from each thing as I go down. And personally what I do, I just muscle test it. So just choose one from career, three from emotional mounds, just one from family, finances, four from goals, one from personal relation, three from here, seven from there, mm. and three from there. Now that's a lot, but yeah. I'm gonna sort them, okay? Because I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm going to sort them and um, I'm going to run the device and I'm going to then also choose which one to work on while we run the device. Does that make sense? So, okay. um, so as we do this, we'll both hold an intention for what? For that things got easy right. when you decide you're worth it. Right. Um, All right, so here's one thing I do. Um, I have very much of an amateur understanding of what these numbers mean. Yeah. <laughs> I, will, I will tell you, so the first one is how kind of recent, the middle, and this is very hacked explanation. Um, there is actually good more detailed training that I've watched that I should probably rewatch uh, in the um, Healy Academy yeah. on the coaching module. And uh, I think uh, Michael Mooney or what Mooney is his name, he goes over this in more detail. So the middle one is kind of how aware someone is of it. The last one is the homeopathic dilution, okay? And uh, oh. so if the, if the middle number is fairly high, it means, oh, you're pretty aware of it. 
Um, what I like to do, so this one says, I can develop freely and independently in such a way that I can best bring my talents to fruition. I truly enjoy my work and I'm good at what I do. So <clears throat> what I wanna do is I wanna go up here up on the upper right-hand corner and uh, sort for potency with the up arrow, okay? Okay. <clears throat> what, I'm, um, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for, personally, when I do energy healing work for people, I'm looking for the blind spot. Does that make sense? That's, yeah. what, I, that's what I really want so that we can dig deeper into that. And so what, when I sort that way, it tends to bring up the blind spot. So now you see the number goes to three and the homeopathic dilution is a D, okay? So it's really a foundational right. thing. So it says, I'm motivated to do my best because I believe in the best in me, right? So that's what we need to connect to. So if, like, if I ask you, so Marsha, are you, are, are you super disciplined? You're like, mm, no, <laughs> that'd be negative. Okay, so here's, um, I wanna share with you something I'm personally uh, going through and working through on myself at the moment, okay? so. I, um, I'm also trying to get fit and I'm also, there's a lot of things like I'm trying to be perform at a pretty high level. Okay. And, um, I realized even just recently that I had a pretty strong belief about myself that I'm actually not a very disciplined person. And that may surprise a lot of people They're like, Oh, Steve, super disciplined. Mm. I'm like, no, I don't. I never really saw that in myself because I have so much evidence of starting things and not finishing them and quitting. Ah. Oh, you do this crazy diet. Yeah, for three days. Oh, you're working yeah. out. You do these cool workouts. Yeah, did it one day. Right now, have I fallen through before? Sure. But I have so many starts and stops in my life. Like, oh, it was like crazy. Right. And so. I, I took on the belief that I am not a disciplined person. So what do I need to do? Oh, so then if I'm not a disciplined person, what I need to get to my goals is I need to really radically uh, change the environment that I operate in. Mm. What do I mean? Oh, I have to have the perfect program. Right. Or I have to have a very high level of accountability or I have to, like does that make sense i'm like oh well since yep. i'm not disciplined i have to find the perfect blah 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 because otherwise i won't won't can't do it why because i'm not actually disciplined right so i so i take on that identity on myself and then i operate out of that identity and then that's a problem isn't it yeah because then i'm always like i i won't do it well this is not the perfect workout this is not the perfect thing. So like, I'm not going to do it. Or it's just like ridiculous bullshit, you know? <laughs> so or I have to day, be all gung ho and do it all at once or don't do it at all. Yeah, if it's, if it's not perfect, screw it. Then I'll never get there. Because I believe it'll be too difficult. And I, since I'm not disciplined, if it's difficult, I won't do it. So I have to figure out a way to make it easy and effective. Yeah. See the problem? And I really, I really felt like God was talking to me about this. I'm like, okay, but that's not my original design. Ah, right. Okay. God did not actually fundam fundamentally make me an undisciplined person. Right. Right. One thing I did last week is, um, you know, for me, it's like, oh, I live, live two tenths of a mile away from the Sacramento River Trail. There's gorgeous biking. The weather's perfect. It's like heaven for people who like to ride a bike. I have a gorgeous bicycle. I bought it used in Greenville, South Carolina. Had I bought that bicycle new, it probably would have been a $7,000 bicycle. It Ouch. is a freaking Italian work of art. Now I did not, I paid like 1800 bucks for it. Okay, got a smoking deal. But I like, I have the flexibility, I have the place. But I'm not riding. Why? Because I'm like, well, I gotta wait till I'm in better shape. I gotta wait till this. I gotta wait till that. Maybe someday down the road I'll go on this really cool long ride all the way up to the Shasta River Dam, which is like 18 miles away. I'm like, well, it'll take a while. Then I'm thinking about it. I'm like, you know, maybe in life it's time to start doing hard things consistently. <laughs> now you've coached with me. I'm always about 
how can we make it easy? Well, just good. Because people shouldn't beat themselves up. If there's an easy solution, I can do that, right? Yeah, for me, I'm like, I need to like, what do I need to do hard? That makes sense? That's why, why am I getting in my 50 degree pool every day? <laughs> because it's yeah. hard, right? And I'm training my yeah. nervous system, like, chill out. What you think is such so dramatic is not. Calm down, right? So the other day, I'm like, I haven't ridden my bike hardly at all. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just simply go ride up to the dam today. It's not going to be a three-hour bike ride from having gone zero to three-hour ride, all right? I'm like, thought about it. I'm like, I won't die. I can finish it. I may be in pain or I may suffer. Right. <laughs> Tough. You can do it anyway. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just to prove the point, right? Guess what? I did it. It was amazing. It was wonderful. I felt great. Sweet. I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. Why have I been avoiding doing the hard things? That makes sense? Yes, it does. Because I didn't think I had the I didn't think I had the discipline or follow through or whatever. You know, it's just all goofy stuff. Anyway, so that's kind of my per like my personal journey on yeah. this, right? So if we go, um, if we go back, actually, we're gonna go back on the screen here. Do, do, do. Um, all right, so I wanna show you what came up here. So, uh, so we're gonna first work on this first one, okay? So I'm gonna type in here, um, I'm motivated to do my best because I believe the best in me, okay? So, um, I am motivated to do my best because I believe the best in me. All right, so, what I'm going to do now is um, I'm I'm going to run this program, okay, while we do some additional energy work for you, okay. And so when I hit um, vibrate, okay. Um, so what I'm going to do. So the question is always like, okay, well, how long and how many times do you run the vibrational program, okay? So in general, shorter and more frequently for more um, acute problems, longer, but not as frequently for more um, chronic issues, right? I stub my toe, ow, that's, that's acute. Or my friend died today, acute. Oh, I felt like a loser my whole life. Mm, that'd be chronic, right? So we're gonna do a five minute interval. So what I do is I muscle test first the, the um, duration, and we're actually gonna do it five minutes, um, four times, okay? So we'll probably interrupt it. Um, I'm just gonna let that run in the background, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back into um, this program here. Uh, and one thing I did is I first measured um, the, uh, I first measured, so, it's very helpful to measure things because anything you measure, you can improve, right? And you need feedback on whether or not something is working. So I first measured this phrase here and I measured it on the map of consciousness. And I'm not gonna take a ton of time to do that. I have tons of training on the map of consciousness. Uh, the map of consciousness just quantifies different levels of consciousness. Anything above 250 is in power, anything below 250 is in force. And uh, it's a way to measure your consciousness your level of consciousness regarding that statement. And so right now it's kind of low, okay? So what we're gonna do, um, the first thing we're gonna do while we're running this in the background um, is also measure this first thing we're working on, right? I am motivated to do my best because I believe the best in me. And that's even lower, that's a 20, right? 
So that's kind of like the BS alarm goes off very loud in your subconscious. Oh, you believe the very best in you. You're like, liar. We have freaking extensive documentation that you don't do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> that makes sense. Yep. And let me do this here real quick. <clears throat> Um, I'm just switching something. Okay. All right. So if we measure something, we want to increase the level of consciousness for it, right? So I'm going to muscle test a couple of different options on what would shift it. Um, I am an emotion code and body code practitioner. For those of you watching it, Google it. Um, Many of my clients are actually also emotion code and body code practitioners. So I like Marsha has a great practice and we work together. And so I'm going to test is an emotion code or is it a trapped emotion or a heart wall? Trapped emotion is just kind of a blown fuse. A heart wall is kind of an energetic wall you build around your heart. Number two option, is it a, um, a spiritual root? A spiritual root just means I've taken my will and I've exercised it against God's Kingdom, what does that mean? If I say I'm worthless and God says you're worth everything, that's an incorrect judgment and I need to repent. And repent doesn't mean to feel bad. It means to change your mind 180 degrees and elevate my level of thinking to agree with what God says, right? So the spiritual uh, uh, roots would be vow, judgment, offense, unforgiveness. Um, then um, is it, so it's a, a trapped emotion, heart wall, spiritual root, Bo or body code issue and the body code is um just kind of a, a computer program that has the emotion code in it but it could be huge number of different energetic imbalances whether it's like a weird spiritual thing or you got exposed to ddt or you really need an adjustment or something's off with your chakra whatever a lot a lot of different things so um so as they do this i'm just muscle testing myself uh so IHW is just inherited heart wall and we need to track down what type it is. So we go to the emotion code chart of shame. So it's inherited when you knew, so it's an inherited emotional predisposition. So um, just inherited from the father's side of the family, um, you know, certain, uh, if you know anything about this, um, psychic trauma can be wired into your DNA and the scientists can prove that through experiments on mice and uh, research they've done with um, children of um, concentration camp survivors, right? So I'm just gonna, uh, with intention, reset that on myself on your behalf. And everyone all the time has a lot of shame. It's just kind of, it's the lowest energetic thing so we just muscle tested, we released that yes. Uh, so that raises that a bit. And we go a so we go a judgment. So judgment to be go myself, others, life, what uh so we go to figure this out, we're gonna go in the word chart, page three, column C six. Judge my reputation to be something on the. So we go on the map in red. Hopeless. All right. So then we'll just have you. So we know, okay, this is what I have been believing. What do we need to change, right? So, we, you know, our words are powerful. And it's important to speak and believe the reality that we want into our lives. Does that make sense? So just say this with me. Say, I, I let go of any judgment. Let go of any judgment. That my reputation is fundamentally hopeless. That my reputation is fundamentally hopeless. And I make a new judgment. And I make a new judgment. That I am created in God's own image. That I am created in God's own image. Created to rule and reign in life. Created to rule and reign in life. And I can easily and effortlessly. Can easily and effortlessly. Return to this original design. 
a return to this original design. And create whatever I want to in life. And create whatever I want to in life. Say, and I have extensive documentation. And I have extensive documentation. On having overcome many things in my life. Of overcoming many things in my life. And I'm going to start celebrating them. And I'm going to start celebrating them. All right. So if I ask you, hey, Marsha, so have you overcome anything in your life? You're like, how much time do you have? <laughs> yeah. Right. So those are the good things to write down, document, rehearse. That makes sense, especially when you're facing something, you know. When David was about to take on Goliath, King Saul said, mm, I don't think you can do this because he's like a stone cold killer and you're like a kid. What did David say? David rehearsed his victories and he said, not a problem, King. Look, the actual Hebrew says this. I grabbed the lion by the beard and I punched him in the face till he died. <laughs> what? <laughs> OK, so Saul was pretty impressed. He's like, OK, well, go for it. You know? <laughs> so. But that's what we have to do often in our lives, the rehearse. Like, okay, what have you accomplished? You've accomplished some stuff. Why don't you focus on that? And not like that you like cheated right. on your diet or some stupid thing, you know? So we go 125 there and a, another judgment. Judgment of others to be something on the Negative page two before other people are inconsiderate. Say, I say this, say, I let go of any judgment. Let go of any judgment. <clears throat> that other people are inconsiderate. That other people are inconsiderate. And I make a new judgment. And I make a new judgment. That many people are wonderfully kind. That many people are wonderfully kind. And I'm going to look for that evidence. And I'm going to look for that evidence. And find those people. And find those people. And get all the help and support I need. And get all the help and support that I need. Right. Because we've had if we have a couple experiences, people being judgy, then that becomes a subconscious belief. And then all the information comes in your conscious mind. Your conscious mind to survive has to make shortcuts. It compares the information coming in against the subconscious beliefs. Life is I am, people are, but doesn't match it, we'll ignore it and or pervert it to match it. So a couple bad experiences, now we start making radical assumptions on what people are saying or thinking when a lot of it's BS, right? Yeah. And, uh, and the degree to which your brain can make up some stuff is quite shocking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like, and if you think about this, if you think about it, anyone watching this, you know this is true because you have said or done things that other people have taken to mean something you did not mean at all. So you know other people's versions of reality is way off, but you never question your own. Yeah. Right? It's like, oh, they thought that they think of this about me. Oh, like, like they wrote it out in an affidavit? <laughs> no, no, I saw their look. They're like, what? <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Well, hold on a second here. You're making radical assumptions about people and what they think about you based on the subtlest of innuendos. Oops. Right, that's a problem, you know. Cool. So that changes that to 310. So I will, I will tell you this from my perspective. I mean, you know, work with a lot of people and a lot of wide range of things. Some of my clients I have the most respect for are actually some of the ones who maybe haven't made as much progress as they want, but they never give up. And they always yeah. refocus and they've been through some hard stuff. Like, bam, that, man, you're a freaking rock star. The people, uh, a lot of these other people is like, I don't, 
it's not like they don't appreciate what they've accomplished, but I'm not as impressed. Does that make sense? Right. Now, sadly enough, the people I'm impressed by aren't impressed by themselves at all because they're too harsh on themselves. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I, I know you do this to your own clients, right? Oh, yeah. Right. Judgment of others to be something on the. Life you. So, uh, there's to be something on the so they say, I let go of any judgment, I let go of any judgment. That sometimes people withdraw from relationships. That sometimes people withdraw from relationships. And it's painful. And it's painful. And I make a new judgment. And I make a new judgment. That God's love for me is always there. That God's love for me is always there. And the better I let go of some relationships. And the better I let go of some relationships. The easier it is to receive better ones in, re in return. The easier it is to receive better ones in return. And I let go of any judgment. And I let go of any judgment. That some people are evil. That some people are evil. And that it impacts my life. And that it impacts my life. I acknowledge some people have issues. I acknowledge some people have issues. But they have not the power or authority. But they have not the power or the authority. To tell me what I'm worth. To tell me what I'm worth. Or prevent me from creating what I want. Or prevent me from creating what I want. I allow the experience with them. I allow the experience with them. Only to make me better and stronger. Only to make me better and stronger. All right. So we go to that. All right. So that shifts that to 700, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back on um, to what we're doing. OK. And I'm going to go back to the list in the same way it's sorted. And uh, I'm going to go to the second one on the list, right? So it's 78% and 8D, 100,000. So the awareness of this might be, you might be more aware that it's an issue and ready to deal with it, but it's still pretty significant, OK? And it says, I free myself from the entanglements in my personal history. It can be and has its place but it doesn't concern me anymore. I live in divine connection and guidance and accept all that was, is, and will be. Mm. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah. Right. It's like, okay, yeah, I've been through some stuff. Woohoo. <laughs> yeah. The, what's the hidden gift in it? Does that make sense? How can we be better and stronger? How can I just really finally be healed from it and move forward, right? So we're going to write down, um, I free myself from the entanglements of my personal history. So that whole phrase, it can and has its place, but it doesn't concern me anymore. I live in divine. So it's like, oh, this happened to me. Oh, yeah. And? I experienced that. Cool. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's not, it's not, we don't have compassion on ourselves or other people or anything like that, but we have to confront, oh, oh, so it owns you or is what you went through making you better and stronger. Right. Right. It's like, we all have that, all have that choice. I, I'm, I'm always fascinated by take children as they grow up you know i know some extraordinary people who have the most jacked up parents you can imagine like oh my god 
and some people who have some really genuinely good loving parents who are like just like what's your get you seriously yeah yeah you went victim to that childhood you know like right. a, still an amateur on what people and, and it's, again everyone has their own experience we don't discount what they feel but they clearly have the wrong perspective because they've gone victim to it instead of going wow I went through some stuff how's it going to make me better and stronger yeah it's always the question and for people watching this one of the fatal errors in life is to go through disappointment and pain and ask why over and over again because the why will rewire you for depression and anxiety and mm -hmm. why always has an, an underlying accusation in it and often that accusation is an accusation against god and it will break your relationship with god and really what you want is you want to ask a different question what's the hidden gift in it and to ask god for peace that's not connected to understanding so you have the ability to go Someone go, well, why'd that happen? You're like, I have no idea, but I'm good. I don't understand, but I'm good. And see, unresolved disappointment occupies a place in your heart that faith is supposed to occupy. Asking why won't fix it. Giving supernatural peace will. And if you do that properly, then your area of great disappointment then becomes your area of great triumph. And that's life changing. So, um, so I'm going to set this to vibrate again. Uh, and we're going to um, go back to this one here. All right. So again, we measure the level of consciousness. Uh, start about 75. Yeah. Something in the body code issue here. No will to do something. So we got to figure out a no will to something about no will to live. Does that make sense? It's different than a will to die. It's just kind of like, ah, uh, I'm just, I can't anymore. Right. Uh, so no will to do what? Something on the negatives, negative uh, page two. Let's see. No will to uh, narrow-minded. So it's kind of like a, uh, like this belief, like to get to where I want to go, you're going to have to do things like this, Marsha. Right. I just can't anymore. I'm just like, right. Oh, you cheated? Yeah. Bam, you just gained a couple pounds. You see, to get to where you want to go, you're going to have to win the personal development Olympics. And you're like, Steve, I'm tired of training for the personal development Olympics. You understand? It's like, I'm, I'm done, right? So, so this is where, in, in one hand, you have, to, you have to get, have a vision of the end result. And in your vision of it, have a feeling that it just all came together by God's grace and mercy, not, oh, I did everything perfectly for 10 years that makes sense yeah and so we're going to uh go to the underlying issue here a inherited heart wall and b6 of shame more shame so for me, uh, you know, this type of shame from the father's side comes up a lot. You know, different practitioners would come up with different things, and it doesn't mean that one is right and one is wrong. You know, one of the reasons for this, I think, is that um, the energetically you find that the that it is the father's role to speak identity into his children. Oh. And um, so this is one reason why um, the father wound is so damaging. And, and you'll see this a lot in people's lives. Um, and, and then you see why fatherless homes, why the statistics on fatherless homes is absolutely shocking, the impact it has. Why? Because the father isn't there to tell hey, this is who you are. 
this is what you're worth, right? And um, the mother's role is different. Does that make sense? And our mom's important. Well, hello, yes. <laughs> but the moms are typically the ones who are actually doing their job and the dads are typically the ones who are dropping the ball. Why that is, I, who knows? But you can't simply go, well, we don't need the fathers. No. It doesn't work that way, sorry. Good luck, right? And uh, if you don't have a father, it's possible to heal from that. Don't get me wrong, right? But you have to be delivered in it, you know? Um, so, so I found that to be especially, uh, you know, many of my clients are women. And I found it especially true, typically energetically, very young girls, three to seven years old. There's some weird thing where they are, seem to be pre-programmed that their job in life is to make the father happy. And if dad is having a bad day, they will catastrophize it and say, it's because I haven't done things right. And so there can be a lot of woundings. And you probably see that in your clients, a lot of woundings at these certain ages in relationships and experiences with father that then form the rest of their lives on like, oh, I have to do things perfectly. Why? Because if I didn't do things perfectly, my father wasn't pleased with me. And we have to have the father's acceptance. So when there's no when there's not a father who speaks unconditional love to you, then it's like, then your value is always connected back to how well am I perform, right? So, um, so that's your mini sermon for the day. Who's ever watching this? <laughs> um, so we reset this no will to narrow minded. Say this, say I'm grateful. I am grateful. That is God's mercy and grace. That is God's mercy and grace that produces my beautiful life that produces my beautiful life and i'm grateful that it's god's mercy and grace and i'm grateful for god's mercy and grace that also gives me the ability that also gives me the ability to do whatever i need to do to do whatever i need to do easily and effortlessly and effortlessly right it's like i in the past i lost 18 pounds once in 13 days how? I asked for it as a gift from God. Now, I unfortunately need to lose that 18 pounds again. It's been years, whatever. It is what it is. In my mind, I'm like, well, I can't do that again. Ah. Uh. Because I don't deserve it. <laughs> oh, I thought God's mercy was new every morning. Amen. <laughs> apparently not right and so if you if you haven't watched this before me i'll try and put a link in here of the difference between being forgiven and being declared innocent and being declared innocent wipes the ink off the documentation of your wrongdoing people have a concept of being being forgiven that they're just a stamp saying okay you screwed up but we're gonna pay it this one time though i mean don't come back here again with this issue again because right we have limited forgiveness for you <laughs> it's like i don't know how we create that in our minds but that's pretty common forgiveness uh we go and forgiveness towards something on 11 page three d Have you ever dealt with anxiety? Yeah, I used to have it really bad. Say this, say I let go of any and all unforgiveness. <clears throat> I let go of any and all unforgiveness. <clears throat> towards the people in my past. Towards the people in my past. Who treated me harshly, who treated me harshly and judged me. Who treated me harshly and judged me. For the anxiety I dealt with. For the anxiety I dealt with. And I forgive them and I let it go. I forgive them and let it go. And I'm grateful that everything I went through. And I'm grateful that everything I went through. 
Only made me better and stronger. Only made me better and stronger. Right. Do you still deal with that anxiety? Uh, just a little bit, but I pop right into releasing it right away. But it yeah. sure made me understand it in other people. And you overcame it. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> right. Right. Good job. And the thing people need to understand is that people don't treat you harshly and give themselves a lot of grace. Right. It's not how it works. Oh, something being nasty to you, man, their own internal self-talk. I promise you, brutal. Yeah. Absolutely brutal. But they give you no grace, they give themselves less. Yeah. this making sense so far how we're doing this yes so we got another judgment uh judgment others to be something on the let us try to eliminate the Say, let go of any judgment. I let go of any judgment. That other people have tried to eliminate me. That other people have tried to eliminate me. In one way or the other. In one way or another. And I make a new judgment. And I make a new judgment. That no one has that power or authority. That no one has that power or authority. To separate me from God's love for me. To separate me from God's love for me. I'll allow anything I've experienced. I'll, I'll allow anything of experience only to make me better and stronger only to make me better and stronger unforgiveness Two. Right. So one of the one of the problems with the law of attraction is if people buy into it, then they buy into the fact that or the belief that everything in your life is something you've created slash attracted. Mm. And one of the problems with it is it tends to ask, tends to get people to focus on the wrong thing. Like, why did this happen? What is it, which will steer you into the ditch versus how can we get to where we want to go? You know, the Bible says, whatever a man sows, that's what he's going to reap. Cool. But it doesn't say everything you are reaping is something that you exclusively have sown. Mm. Sometimes stuff just happens. You know what I'm saying? The why is not important. It always has an accusation in it. The how, the what is the hidden gift in it is helpful. The how do we get to where we want to go is helpful, right? And it, it then um, limits our life also to our ability to perform, mm -hmm. right? Are you confessing enough? Are you visualizing enough? Are you right. blah, 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 right? Oh, I'm going to get to where I want in life. And I'll be like, yeah, I created this by doing everything perfectly. Oh, you mean, God, you just skipped <laughs> yeah. the grace and mercy. Right. Good job. You're on your own. Have fun. Does that make sense? Or, yeah. or can you get something you don't technically deserve? Does that make yeah. sense? In, in working on my, my new business, I um, was spending some time thinking, okay, energetically, what do, what do I come into agreement with, mm. right? What does faith look like? And there was the, uh, the centurion who came to Jesus and his servant was sick. And he's like, my servant's sick. And Jesus is like, okay, I'll come and heal him. He, the, the centurion goes, no, 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 no. He goes, I am a man of authority and I am a man under authority. And if I say to this man, go, he goes. And if I say to this man, come, he comes. You 
only need to speak the word and my servant will be healed. Hmm. Right. So he said, I'm in alignment with what you say. Right. So when I'm thinking about my business, I'm like, what could I, what could I believe and confess and imagine about this business I started? It was very interesting. The word that I came up with was unfair. What do you mean unfair? Yeah. Could I have a business that looked unfair to people? Oh, it's not fair. You're going to have the right time, had the right partnerships. You had this advantage. You just have right. to meet this person. You're like, blah, 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 blah. Does that make sense? Oh. Yeah. Yes, it's unfair. You can't point to my perfect performance while I have this great business. You can only, right. you can only call it unfair or if you have a higher level of consciousness, you go, oh, you tapped into mercy and grace and abundance. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so that's for me. I'm like, okay, well, what I tap into. So in your journey here, it's like, okay, what are you going to have to come into alignment with, with your faith and your belief and what you're saying about your physical health? Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah. You know, when we allow the current circumstance and environment and results and past history to impact what we're thinking and feeling and saying and doing, now you can only create more of the same. Or do we go, uh, so we take the history, we go, shoop, and we go, you tell me what you think about me, my ability to create what I want, my physical body, all that. And I will, and I will only line myself up with that. That makes sense. Cool. So um so this say i let go of any and all unforgiveness I let go of any and all unforgiveness to the apparent harshness to the apparent harshness of the law of attraction of the law of attraction and i let it go and i let it go and i'm grateful that as god's daughter and i'm grateful that as god's daughter <laughs> i live in his kingdom i live in his kingdom full of mercy and grace full of mercy and grace which is his good pleasure which is his good pleasure that makes sense yep so we take that one then also to 700 and we go back and measure this one up to 125 so we're chipping away at it that makes sense right and so you could continue running the program consistently and continue seeing what comes up, what we can work through. That makes sense. So anyways, hope that's helpful for everybody. That's about an hour's worth today. Yeah, awesome. Any, uh, was this helpful for you, Marsha? Yeah, it was. Is there any way you can send me a PDF uh, of the analysis? Yes, I'll do that right now. Um, then that would give me something else to follow through with too all the information is here is pretty basic you mind if we share it with anyone who watches the video as well no nope. go for it okay okay beautiful everyone will appreciate that thank yeah. you for participating for being yeah, that helps vulnerable a lot and wholehearted to show me to go through the database and and then to switch it for you know, the, the one that needs most work. That was, yeah. that's what so I was that's, missing. That's what I've been finding very helpful using the healing, combining with the motion code and body code to target it. Does that make sense? Because it's always a yeah. trick of like, oh, we have this cool tool. Awesome. But what do you aim it at? Right. What do you do with it? Yes. What do you do with it? Does that make sense? Yeah. So totally. it's kind of like, oh, I got a nice rifle. Awesome. Boom. Let's put the scope on it. Oh, look, I can like, Kill an antelope at like a thousand yards now. Before, forget it. You still have the nut rifle. Right. You didn't have the ability to get it on target accurately. So, yeah. Nice. Thank you. you very much. And You're I'll be welcome. looking forward for the recording. Awesome.